this video, I will talk about green gas anesthesia and climate impact. First, I'll break this down in simple principles, and I will leave you with four actionable steps you can take, how you can make anesthesia more climate friendly. As many of you know, the very anesthetic gases that we use daily could be contributing to climate change. This isn't just a concern for environmental scientists. It is really something that we as anesthesiologists must address. Why? Because we hold the power to make choices that don't just save lives, but also protect the world that we live in. So today, we will explore how volatile anesthetics may impact the atmosphere, the science behind it, and the actionable steps you can take to practice sustainable anesthesia, all without compromising patient care. Now, volatile anesthetics like sevoflurane, desflurane, and nitrous oxide are indispensable tools in modern anesthesiology. They enable precise control over anesthesia with minimal systemic effects, but their ecological footprint is significant. Let's break it down. Each gas has its own global warming potential, or GWP, a metric that measures its heat trapping ability relative to carbon dioxide over a specific time horizon. As an example, desflurane, one gram equals the warming effect of 2,600 grams of CO2 over 100 years. But sevoflurane with a GWP of 195 is less impactful than desflurane, but far from harmless. And here's the kicker, these gases are short-lived in the atmosphere. For instance, sevoflurane lasts only 1.9 years, yet during that time, its heat-trapping capacity is extraordinary, comparable to some long-lived greenhouse gases like methane. So to better understand this, we need to define two key terms used in atmospheric science. Number one, half-life. This is the time that it takes for a concentration of a gas to reduce to 50% of its initial value. It is commonly used in pharmacology, but it also provides useful reference for understanding the decay rate of anesthetic gases. Lifetime? This measures how long it takes for gas concentration to decrease to about 37% of its initial value. It is a preferred metric in atmospheric science because it directly relates to the cumulative heat trapping effect of the gas over its presence in the atmosphere. And the two are related. Lifetime equals 1.44 times half-life. Why sevoflurane has a short lifetime of 1.9 years, nitrous oxide persists for over 100 years, continuously amplifying its warming effects. As Anesthesia practitioners, it is essential to consider our individual responsibility in the environmental footprint of our practice. Every choice we make in the operating room contributes to the bigger picture. While the impact of a single decision may feel small, collectively they do add up to a significant change. As seen on these graphs, Due to the significant differences in lifetime of sevoflurane and CO2, the cumulative heat drop in over 20 years and 100 year time horizon following the emission of one gram of sevoflurane corresponds to the emission of, of 700 grams or 195 gram of CO2 respectively, depending on the chosen time horizon. Our responsibility as anesthesiologists is first and foremost to patient safety. However, striking a balance between effective care and environmental responsibility is not just possible, it is important and essential. Let's consider a few practice examples. Desferin. Its high GWP means it should be reserved for cases where its clinical benefits are undeniable. Nitrous oxide, this is often replaceable with other techniques. For instance, studies have shown its use can often be avoided in favor of regional blocks or TIVA. Sevoflurane, while less harmful, can still be used better and optimized, using minimal fresh gas flows significantly reduces its weight and environmental impact. Modern anesthesia workstations provide precise control over flow rates, so there's no excuse not to use them effectively. Now let's delve deeper into the science. The environmental impact of anesthetic gases is determined by two factors, radiative efficiency and atmospheric 
lifetime. Radiative efficiency is the ability of a gas to absorb and emit infrared radiation. Larger, more complex molecules like desflurane and sevoflurane trap heat more effectively than smaller ones. Number two, atmospheric lifetime. How long the gas remains in the atmosphere? For example, nitrous oxide persists for over 100 years, continuously adding to global warming. A single liter of desflurane contributes the equivalent warming of about 12,000 liters of gasoline. Sevoflurane, while lower, is still impactful, equaling to about 1.290 cubic meters of melted polar ice per liter. These aren't abstract figures. They are measurable realities impacting our climate right now. So what can you do to minimize your environmental impact without compromising patient care? Here are the four proven strategies. Number one, minimize fresh gas flow. Use low flow rates to reduce waste. Modern equipment that we use in everyday practice makes this easy and safe. Consider total intravenous anesthesia or TIVA. TIVA eliminates volatile anesthetics emissions altogether. While it's not suitable for every case, it is a powerful option for many. Three, use regional anesthesia techniques. Peripheral nerve blocks and neuraxial anesthesia are not only environmentally friendly, but also associated with faster recovery rates. Some of you may be wondering, will these changes compromise patient outcomes? The evidence says no. For example, multiple studies have shown that TIVA can reduce postoperative nausea vomiting, leading to faster patient recovery. Regional anesthesia, in particular, when clinically appropriate, often provides superior pain control compared to general anesthesia. Incorporating sustainable practices is about enhancing care, not necessarily diminishing it. So why does this matter so much? Because the climate crisis is already here. The gases we emit now could accelerate tipping points, irreversible changes to our planet systems. As healthcare providers, we have an ethical responsibility to lead by example. By adopting sustainable anesthesia practices, we contribute to global effort to combat climate change. The choice is clear. We have the knowledge, tools, and power to make a difference. Small adjustments in our daily practice can significantly reduce our carbon footprint while maintaining the highest standards of care. Let's ensure that the air we breathe both in and outside of the operating room remains clean for generations to come. If this message resonates with you, hit subscribe for more insights on sustainable anesthesia practices. And don't forget to share this with your colleagues, because together we can make a healthier future for our patients and our planet.